She must be real proud. Oh, she is. Uh, what's there not to be proud of? Eight years for a bachelor's degree? How great is that? I think it's the complete package. I don't know. I am the complete package. Nah, well. Well, remember we were talking about on the way here? Are you recording this? We were recording, yeah. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to A Face for Radio. This is your host, Andrew Latham, today in my wonderful studio. My co host, uh, Brandon Allen, a.k.a. Allen Bear, is here with me. Allen, say hello. Hey. Alan is uh, Alan. Introduce yourself. You, you Everyone did. who listens knows who you, you are. You just did. It's true. Alan is a friend of mine from the mission. We served together. Well, we weren't together. We were in the same district. Uh, it was a good time. Hey, Park, listen to this. Does Park listen? No, he's an idiot. He's busy practicing for a test, studying for a test that will determine the rest of his life. I don't think you know. We'll have to cacao talk him later. And, yeah, I have to tag him on uh, the description. So. Well, he does not on Facebook because uh, it takes too much of my time. By the way, okay, before we get into <laughs> everything else, let's talk a little about Facebook, okay? <laughs> Whenever, I, you'll, you'll hear this a lot. I've, I've noticed a lot of my, my lady friends. Ladies. Um, How many, like three or four of them? Yeah. They don't know that I'm friends with them, though. You know? Oh, okay. They, like, question, like, who's out there? Or, like... They'll turn around in the middle of the night when I'm following them, and they'll yell, quit following me. And I'll just, like, duck away and hide. So, you know, they don't know that we're friends, but trust me, we're, <laughs> we're friends. Um, you know them better than themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I follow them on Pinterest. Uh, I guess you can be a creep on I guess you can't do it on Facebook, but on Instagram. Yeah, well, Instagram has has uh, the private, you know, the ones where you have to ask for yeah, permission. Yeah, but girls don't do that. Because no, they want dude, as many followers as possible. Trust me, my friend. They do do it. Really? You don't know. You've been married. You've had a girlfriend. You, you've had a single woman since you were uh, 15? Yeah. When did you meet Amy? When you were 15? I was 15. How old are you now? 25. Okay, so it's 10 years. You don't understand. Trust me. Trust me. A lot well, of just girls... Just because I... I've been uh, basically married to the same girl for 10 years doesn't mean... Doesn't mean... I don't know how other girls operate. Yeah, but I do know how they operate. All right, well... Well, we're going to get to that actually a little bit later. Are we? Because a woman found out how I operate, and now she's mad that that I'm letting the secrets out of how how they work. (laughs) What was I talking about? Yeah, Facebook. Okay. So, this happened to a lot of girls I know, but they deactivate their Facebooks. And the, the thing, the reason they always give is... I just it takes up too much time. You'll hear that all the time, right? Yeah. I just I just always go on Facebook and I never do anything. It's like, okay, so you're going to be productive now? Are you telling me the only thing between you and becoming an astronaut was Facebook? <laughs> okay, yeah, that makes sense. Well, if you're not going to Facebook, go make me a sandwich. <laughs> but you know, so so for you ladies, you important. I don't know how many girls. I don't think there's any girls that listen to this, but if there's uh, this next week, I'm going to prepare a how-to. How to use Facebook? Because I, I, it's difficult for me to look at your pictures at three in the morning when I'm in bed and can't sleep. When your Facebook is deactivated, and your Instagram is private, and your Pinterest doesn't have any pictures of you, and you're not active on Twitter. Trust me, I've searched. Do you have Twitter? I do. I don't know why. Oh, I I didn't I make don't... now. I'm not saying I didn't make a Twitter so I could stalk some girls i'm not saying that i that's either here nor there but twitter is stupid it's the lowest form of communication yeah well i don't have twitter so that makes me better than you you're better than me for a lot of reasons but that's not one of them <laughs> that's actually a really bad reason no it's a reason nonetheless this is a bad thing well, oh, well yeah it is but it's a bad reason <laughs> no, it's a good reason no it isn't i'm telling you i'm looking you right now in the face and telling you it's a bad reason no yes i'm right whatever uh so yeah so this is this is alan is a good friend of mine I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't say he's a good friend. He's an acquaintance. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah, okay, good. You have to be. I decide the relationship, not you. Really? Well, it's like uh, breaking up with someone. Like, it's not doesn't have to be mutual. Just one party has to agree to a breakup. Okay. Well, in Seinfeld, there was an episode <laughs> where George broke up with that girl, but she was like, no, we're not breaking up. Actually, another how-to I'm going to get to soon (laughs) is how to break up with someone. I did, you know, before, how to be rejected. If you didn't hear that... so many ideas. Yeah. Well, I don't sleep well. I don't know how you're an expert in all these things and still mean to... You dare to question my expertise? (laughs) Obviously, I am an expert because I have a podcast. Okay. 
Well, that does make you the authority. I guess you have to be the authority to have your own podcast. Exactly. I am the authority. Um, but, you know, before I taught you guys how to be rejected, this next one of the how-tos I'm, gonna, I'm coming up with soon, um, I'm currently working on, is how to uh, break up with someone. How to be on the giving end of rejection instead of the receiving. Do you know, are you also the authority on the receiving end too? Of, of rejection? Yeah. Yeah, are, it's actually... a how-to on how to cope with rejection? Yeah, did you not listen to the show? Did I did that one already? I did that one. You're a prick, you know that? <laughs> you come I on my show and you come tomorrow. on my show and you say, you forgot. I think I'm pretty sure I recorded that. Really? Yeah. Which episode? I'll have to find out. It happened after a very specific event, which which triggered that. Oh, okay. But rejection is actually kind of easier now because if I'm... if. I know how to do it. I don't know if she, if you know, if we had, if I had a first date, and then at the end of the first date, she goes, "I'd love to go on a second date." Now I'm screwed because I've, I don't know what to do. A second date? I don't have any other shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. What are we gonna do a second time? I'm once once the relationship happens, I'm pretty good, but getting to the relationship is where. Yeah. That's the, that's the hard part. I guess you need to. You need to teach me how to do that because I haven't been on a first date in a long, long time. I will. I, romance is easy. Is it? It is. It's way easy. Well, I actually, no, what, that's another how-to is how to be romantic. Well, <laughs> well <I> guess, <laughs> So many ideas. Well, I guess the, the question everyone's thinking right now is why isn't it going well for you? Well, like we talked about tonight, on the surface, I am a loser. On the surface, it's not... On paper. Yeah, on paper, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if you saw my resume, you would not hire me. You know, 28, unemployed for eight months out of the year, uh, taking forever to get it back. But I have, a, but the thing is, if, if, if I told all these things to a woman and I said, now let me explain. And if she gave me five minutes to explain everything, she'd go, oh, okay. Like, I'm not lazy. I work. Yeah. And when I work, I work hard. I mean, I wouldn't say hard, but I, I'm there. It's called human capital. Just because you don't, just because you don't have to, just because you don't work hard at your job, just because your job's not difficult, doesn't mean you're not working hard. You judgmental pricks listening. But yeah, so on, if I if I handed a woman my dating resume, it would be difficult for her to go. Yeah, it's not what to. Tinder is though. Basically, I a couple of weeks ago I made a Tinder for about ten minutes, and then I oh you did I realized well I had a Tinder. What year is it? 20, so about two years ago, I had a Tinder. And then... Is that the time you used it for 10 minutes, or did you have that? No, back long? then I had it for like, oh, I don't know, two weeks, a month or something. Oh, really? But this this past, a couple weekends ago, I had, I had a Tinder for like 10 minutes because I was bored. And out here in Utah County, every single girl's uh, profile was the following. I love my friends and family. They mean the world to me. I love the outdoors and hiking. No hookups, active LDS, five foot ten. Yeah. They're all five foot ten. Yeah. They can't find any six six foot guys who want to go on dates with them or something. <laughs> and it's always a picture of them hiking in Zion. Oh, well, of course. Like how come how come they don't put binge eating tacos and watching Netflix? Like, I don't know. I guess it's people attractive. people do that, don't they? Yeah. I mean, more people but, do that than hiking. Yeah, but you don't want people to perceive that that's what you're doing all the time. People, Why? Girls want you to perceive them as they're healthy and they're they're active all the time. God, um, it's so tiring being active. <laughs> oh, by the way, I hate that word. I active? hate when people say that they're active. Yeah. Active in what? Being an asshole. <laughs> That's probably what you're active in being. I just looking. I just looking for someone active. Okay, what does that mean? Active. You want someone who's skinny? Just say that. Yeah. You're not. But you're skinny, but you're not active. No. I'm not active at all. Your metabolism pisses me off. Well, I'm I'm not like. No, you're skinny. I'm skinny-ish. I mean, you. It's not. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not like you were on the mission when you looked like a freaking Ethiopian child who just <laughs> was misplaced. Was I skinny on the mission? Uh, you I, looked, I've gained you, ten pounds since. Oh wow, ten pounds! Wow. Like in the face, right here. Nobody can tell. You still look really? the same. Yeah. I bet I bet if we were to run into one of our Japanese friends, well, yeah. they would just blatantly tell me, "Wow, right, you 
got really big. Yeah, well, that's that's the good part about being fat when you're young. Like, I can only go up. Like, if I if I can go up to 600 pounds, and they're like, well, he was fat then. He's going to get fatter now. But, you know, if you're skinny in high school and you gain some weight, they're like, oh, jeez, yeah. what happened to that guy? But me, if I lose weight, if I, I could stay where I'm at, and everyone's like, well, he's a fatty. That's just how it is. I could lose weight, and they'll go, wow. Well, Look at this guy. Amazing. I could go, I could go up to 1,000 pounds and they'll go, well, you know, it's what fat people do. They just get fatter. So you're screwed because you have to be like, like stink on a monkey on that kind of thing, man. Yeah. That reminds me, I was on Netflix the other day. I was, I was scrolling through to find something to watch. Uh -huh. It was a documentary. I didn't watch it, but I saw the title. It was something along the lines of, World's Heaviest Man Gets Married. Oh. If you're into that kind of thing, just check it out. Tell us how it is. World's heaviest man's married, and I'm. And still... you can email in with your with your reviews, right? Yeah, yeah. What's the email address again? <laughs> oh, prick. V a f f r show at gmail dot com. <laughs> yeah, in case you buttholes don't know it already. Uh, that's all. You know. You know. It's weird that there's a there there's like a market for that. Like, who cares? It's just interesting that that Charles. Did you watch man... it? No, I didn't watch it. Would you watch it? Would I watch? Know about it? Uh, the I mean, heaviest man getting married. Not really. Is the girl hot? I don't know. I didn't watch it. What country is it? I think he's Chinese. A fat guy in China. Well, he 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 had like an Asian complexion. I'm, I'm assuming he's Chinese because, you know, num that, w that wouldn't that way. Yeah, in China, in Japan, they probably would have killed him by now too. Like that'd be a, that's a bring great shame to his family. Yeah, he would have killed himself. That's true. Well, he probably couldn't. It's too fat. <laughs> but apparently, like, the, the cover, the thumbnail on the... On the uh, Let me look this on, up right now. The image. Yeah. I want to say, like, he was being carried, uh, you know, like, you know, like Aladdin, when he becomes king and he gets carried in by his, by his... Uh, by his loved ones? Yeah. Or the, no, the guards? No, no. His guards, yeah. yeah. Kind of like that. How many guards do you need to carry a thousand pound man? What's it called? World's Fattest Man Gets Married? I think. I, I don't know. It was something along, along those lines. I'll just lines. check Netflix real quick. I don't know why we're talking about this now. Uh, what were we talking about? Fat people. World's Fattest Man. Watch. Oh, the World's Heaviest Man Gets Married. Yeah. That dude looks Mexican. Yeah, he's not Chinese. That oh, dude really? is from like Colombia. Well, oh, they got him on a flatbed, flatbed <laughs> truck. He looks like a drug kingpin. <laughs> That's awesome. He's like the fat pope. Oh, I have to watch it now. After losing four, oh wait, hold on. After losing four hundred of his one thousand two hundred, damn, one thousand two hundred twenty-five pounds. Mexico's Manuel, or no, sorry, Manuel Uribe. Is it Manuel or Manuel? It's Manuel, isn't it? It's called Manny. Manny Uribe faces logis, log, logistical ops. I can't speak English. Yeah, logistical. You can't read. You're so stupid. <laughs> My fat's in the way. Logistical obstacles as he prepares to marry his longtime girlfriend. This movie is heartfelt and emotional. Well, good for him. Heartfelt and emotional. Yeah. Like what part of that? That that just makes me. Cringe. So now he's down to eight twenty-five. That's pretty good. I mean, pretty good. That's he's the world's heaviest man. That's that's terrible. No, I don't think this world's heaviest is like official. I don't think that a guy went around finding fatties and said, you know, who's the world's heaviest? Well, he was... Dude, there's fatter people than 825 pounds. Really? Oh yeah. How many do you know? None. Okay. Oh, because I don't know them. They suddenly don't exist. Is that what you're telling me? Well, you don't know they do exist. Okay. World's. We're looking up right now. World's fattest. There we are. Manny's going to come up. Andres Moreno. This is December 6, 2015. That's not accurate. Well, that's, uh, not, that's not recent enough. This is four months after. World's fattest man dies age 38. Okay, well, he's dead, so he doesn't count. Wait, 980 pounds. Oh, at his heaviest. Okay, well, that, yeah, that's right. the guy's was 1225. Right. Looks like I'm right again. <sighs> List of the heaviest people. Okay, here we go. <laughs> There's a Wikipedia page. <laughs> 1,400 pounds. He's an American? Hell yeah. Go America. John Brower Minock. He's dead. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, but he... Oh, okay. Well, he was the fattest. Okay, let's find... I want to find the closest one to die. Um, Francis John Lang. Uh, peak weight was 1,200 pounds. All right, well, just... No, one, no, one, no one cares to this point. No, I'm right. No, you're not. Dude, uh, Manuel isn't even in the first top five. Is he in there? If he's not in there, and there's a he's Netflix right here. He's right here. It, he's right here. One thousand three hundred sixteen pounds. Uh, and he's still alive. Wait, no. He died, bro. He died in twenty fourteen. He did. Yeah, right here. Wait, when was the documentary made? Well, it must have been this year if he's dead, jackass. It was probably 2014 or 2013. All right, well. Oh, so who's wrong? You. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. After you pick... Okay. Well, you're not right. Yeah, I am. I was right because my only my only assertion was that you were wrong. And because you're wrong, I am right. All right, I'll let you Let's have move this on one. with the show. <laughs> I'll let you have this one. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right, so we're going to bring uh, Alan Bear in. We might get Polar Bear and Panda Bear in the show one, one day, too, hopefully. Probably not Panda Bear ever. Yeah, if. Well, do you, do you do, like, call-ins? We probably could. I think he's going to be out here, so. He said he might really? come out here in, like, uh, October or September. Oh, really? If I'm still doing shows then. Oh, he's going to come out for your show? Yeah, I'm going to fly him out on my budget of zero. Yeah. I think he said he's going to come to BYU for something. Park would even still say that's a, it's too expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll get a parfait and a pair of gloves for him. He'll freaking be all over that, like, white on rice. All right. So, here we are with the deal breaker. Uh, um, this one is, which is the deal breaker, gap tooth or snaggle tooth? It looks like right now more people have chosen gap tooth over snaggle tooth. This one's tough. I don't think I voted, but I'm going to go with gap tooth. Explain yourself. I mean, like snaggle tooth, you can actually like, you know, you can control it. You're like you don't have to be It's kind of hidden forth. by your lips. Exactly. Yeah. But like gap tooth, it's going to be there forever and ever until you change it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, gap tooth's like, like, that's always seen too. Sometimes, you know, a snaggle tooth, like, just in normal conversation, you might not yeah, yeah. see a snaggle tooth. Like, first impression, boom, you're going to see the gap tooth. Yeah, you go, holy crap. And you judge them right away. Do we got a subway running away. through there? What's yeah. going on? <laughs> that's true, you do judge them. If I had a gap tooth, what I would do is I would spray people with soda or water through my gap. That'd be what, fun. You're just going to always have soda or water around? Yeah. For that purpose. Okay. That's logical. Stupid. Jackass. It is That's logical. No, it's stupid. Snaggletooth, though, I feel like you'd probably end up... Uh, you know what? I'm not sure. I don't think I've ever met anybody with a snaggletooth. Dude, you lived in Japan for two years. There were there was Every single woman I there had snaggletooth. True. I guess not recently. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, snaggletooth, now I'm pissed. Now that I think about it. Well, which is the correct answer? That's what we're going over right now. Okay. I think gap tooth is the correct answer yeah. because of what you said. It's, you, it's the first thing you notice, and you're always going to be looking at it. Well, let's let's look up some gap tooths real quick <laughs> and see, like, if there's if there's a gap that isn't a big deal. I think they're all big deals. They're all dudes. Like that's uh, no. I mean, yeah. Like seriously, this chick. This is a model. And the first thing I'm drawn to is her gap. Yeah, I think gap tooth. Guys, isn't that mean? I, I mean, like, you're tagged with that trait. Like, when people talk or reference you, like, yeah. like there's Michael Strahan right there, right? <laughs> They'll be like... Like, oh, that guy used to be a football player, and also, boom, he has... Or yeah, or like, gap tooth. so I went on, so I was hanging out with Jared the other day. And they're like, "Oh, gap tooth, Jared." <laughs> <laughs> they're like, "Yeah." <laughs> All and right. What, what would a snaggle tooth look like? A snaggle tooth is like the teeth that are up and up on the gums. Okay. At least that's what I think. That's that's what I was talk, talking about. Yeah, yeah. 
None of these girls have snaggle teeth. Oh, this one. That's what I'm... She looks like a vampire. Yeah. I think... Uh, oh. I think the best description I've ever heard for for people with particularly bad teeth, uh-huh. especially in Japan when you come across them pretty often, was was the one that Crompton gave me when I was his companion. What was it? He said something along the lines of, he or she looks like there's a Lord of the Rings battle going on in their mouth. <laughs> There's combat in there. Yeah, I mean, if you French kiss this girl, you'd you you'd have a bloody tongue. I wouldn't even go there. They're all Asian chicks. This is a tough one. Yeah. Yeah, because will you notice the snaggle tooth real quick, too? Yeah. Um, you know what? I think, though, Gap... Ah, oh, Snaggletooth is bad, too. How much longer do we have to look at Gap Tooth and can we leave it? Can we leave it as a tie? No, there's no ties. There are no ties? Nope. I'm going to vote. I'm going to stick with my vote and go Gap Tooth. Okay, well, because you're always wrong, and I'm always right, <laughs> we're going to have to go with Snaggletooth. I mean, this really, in in all, you know, honesty... I, I, I hope you people understand this, but these deal breakers are just jokes. I mean, if you're really going to not date someone or consider dating someone because of these things, uh, you're pretty shallow. That being said, I refuse to date someone <laughs> <laughs> with a gap tooth or a snack. Tooth. And we won't, like, we won't judge you if you judge people by these traits. Yeah, right? yeah. No, we will judge you because judging is fun and easy. And that's, that's what I meant. And that's why, yeah, that's why we do it. You judge people, but you don't care, right? I mean, you, you you blatantly tell the truth about how you feel. Yeah. Whether it be positive or negative, but yes. deep down inside, you really don't care, right? Are you talking to me? It's like, I'm talking to oh, you. Oh, okay. Because you, you don't care about anything. That's true, yeah. That's what happens when you die inside. You just give up. I know. And everything. I'm also dead inside. Yeah, I know. And you have a wife and kid. It's pretty, pretty impressive that you could pull all that yeah. off. well... Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, let's see. Yeah, but you know what? Which one is easier to fix? I think Snaggletooth is easier to fix. How do really? you fix a gap? How, how do you fix a Snaggletooth? Well, you just the gap is it. just braceless. Braces, right? Yeah, but I with a Snaggletooth, you, you just pull it out. You have to? Is there a space in your gums where the Snaggletooth is supposed to be? I think it's like gap? too many teeth in your face. Oh, really? I think so. I'm not a dentist. That just sounds painful to pull out. Like, Well, yeah, you'd up. be under. Yeah. Ugh. Braces weren't exactly a freaking. Yeah, braces. Yeah, I had a I had a horrible. I am a disgusting disfigurement of a human being. I had braces forever. How long did you have them for? <sighs> Two and a half years. You didn't wear your rubber bands, did you? No. Did you? Hell yeah, I wore my rubber bands. I wanted those buttholes off of me. Gosh. I was on my rubber bands like a freaking well, SS I, on a Jew. That's how hard. That's how, that's how I was on. Well, I only had to wear them for for because you go in every month, right? Or every six yeah, weeks, yeah, right? every month. I think I only had to wear them for for one cycle, one month. Oh, seriously? Yeah, dude, I had those those suckers on for like a year, and yeah. I had I had front to back, and then I had triangle ones too. Oh yeah, I had I had those. Yeah, see, and I was retarded. Other kids could put their rubber bands on with their fingers, but I had to keep a little hook around. <laughs> And I couldn't eat hamburgers. Like, dude, being, having braces sucks. You can't eat any good food. And then one of the brace, one of my gums came around one of them yeah. and started, uh, like, eating my, my brace. And this the guy had to, like, cut it out, and it sucked. But, yeah, braces sucked. Yeah, you got to make sure you keep your braces clean. There was this, there was this kid in my neighborhood I grew up with. His mm-hmm. name was also Brandon. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Brandon. What's up? Uh, but he... <laughs> This guy was like, he had no hygiene at all. Uh-huh. You know, kids growing up, teenage boys. But Where was his mom? <laughs> <laughs> My mom didn't like let that slide with me. Yeah, but this kid never brushed his teeth. So like when he got his braces off, he had white spots where his braces oh, were. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. his teeth had turned yellow. Flossing uh, with your braces sucked. Yeah, I never did that. I still have my retainer on the bottom. I do too. And the dentist, you know, always asked me, "Was the last time you flossed?" I was like, "When was the last time I was here?" Do you do you floss? Not. I try and get under that retainer, but like I end up like it like really hurts, and I end up crying. Do you use those blue things? Yeah, you have to use the freaking needle and yeah, thread. Yeah. yeah. Now that I don't have dental insurance, I should probably uh, 
take a little bit better care of my teeth, but they make dentures, right? So, yeah. so who cares? My wife's grandma has some dentures. Yeah. yeah. I've never had a cavity. Never? Never. Hmm. I don't know how that works either. That That's pretty good. That's pretty amazing. Do you have cavities? Not regularly. I, I've had a couple, but uh. I'm not... I'm no virgin. I'm no virgin when it comes to, to cavities. <laughs> You've had your ca- <laughs> cavity virginity taken. Awesome virginity. <laughs> <laughs> Popped your cavity cherry. All right. I actually one of my other deal breakers that I was thinking of was, uh, and, and th- this will be the next one, but I'll give you guys a sneak peek for you regular for you regular listeners, all three of you. Um, one of them's here, so yeah, all so all two of you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> this is why I'm single. Um, uh, the other deal breaker is going to be like plaque so thick that it looks like they just took yellow cake and smeared it on their teeth. Oh, yeah. And I, could, I had to think of another one. But that one's pretty... I mean, that one's... It's hard to come up with one that can rival that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what What, what would the other one... I couldn't even think of... At the moment, I couldn't think of another one that would... I like cold sores all over your lips. Oh, yeah. That's... Like zits. <laughs> like... Like big, gross, yellow, white heads, like all just across. Oh yeah, that's yeah. We'll do that one. Okay. Because you don't want to be near either of those. Yeah. I had zits growing up a little bit, like on my forehead. I had that re- was the worst. I had really bad acne growing up. We we did everything, and then we got Accutane. Do you know what Accutane is? Is that the pill that it's like it's like a nuke for your? body? Yeah, that's essentially what it is. <laughs> you have to get your blood drawn every month and tested to make sure your liver is not going to die. Oh really? And uh, it can like mess with your mood. And if you get pregnant, your baby will come out looking like, like Frieza Evolution <laughs> Two, with the giant like, the tail. No, with like the long head. Yeah. Whatever evolution of Frieza that was, but uh, so our my friend Tomas, sup Tomas, you're probably you might be listening, but uh, I'll tell him to listen to this one because he's in it. Okay. But Tomas took it before we did, and. Uh, we is his name Thomas or Tom? Or Tomas. Just, you call him Tomas. His name is his Tomas. Name is Tomas. T O M A S. His dad's Cuban, so. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it's not that cool, but it's okay. Okay. But anyways, Tomas was taking this this medicine too, and of course, being teenage boys, and well, just being boys, we just made fun of each other. And one day, me and Garrett were really ripping into him. <laughs> I can't remember about what, but he was like, "F you guys." Like, I have hate you. And we're like, yeah, whatever, you cry, baby. Go in your corner and cry. And he just, like, he was like, and then, like, later on when he was when he was fine, he was like, no, I really hated you guys that day. Like, I don't want to be your friends anymore. And we were like, yeah, whatever, you cry, baby, puss. Who cares? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Accutane was good. That's when I realized that they can't find my veins. I have deep veins, apparently. Really? Yeah, which is good because it's hard, it's harder to kill me. With like a knife, I guess. Yeah. Well, which is which sucks for you because you'd be suffering that much longer. No, it means I'd live that much longer. I'm harder to kill, not slower to die. Stupid. That's the same thing. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> well, I guess it is. I mean, I guess the harder you are to kill, the slower you will die. Well, if you're torturing somebody, obviously you don't. Want We're not to talking kill. about torture. Why would Why would somebody want to kill you without torturing you? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I mean, if, if someone was coming after you with a knife, their main objective is not to kill you right away. Are you sure? Well, that's why you, you would get a gun or, you know. There are people that get stabbed to death all over the world every single day. Okay. Well. So did I win this one too? No. Or? No. <laughs> okay. no? Okay. Tie. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back to this one then. <laughs> All right, let's get to the Would You Rather now, then. Um, the Would You Rather, this one, is... This one came in from an email. Uh, it was anonymous. I'm not sure who did Wait, it. Wait, when you say you get stuff from email, people really email you? Yeah, I actually do get some emails. I'm really? pretty sure it's, like, the same person who just feels bad for me. And he's, like... I'm pretty sure I know who it is. Is it your, is it is it Garrett? No, because he's a piece of human garbage. <laughs> he has a wife and a kid, and he has school. He has things to do. Okay. So, um... Well, good for this guy for... For yeah, him. seriously, thank you, whoever you are. Uh, this his, his would you rather, or hers, probably a his, let's be honest, but um, you can be in the same room as someone who's vaping, or you can have sriracha injected underneath your fingernails. 
Hmm. I think I'd rather... You know, I've this one, it's not the funny answer, but it is the right answer. And I'd rather be in a room with someone who's vaping. Because then at least I can hate something. <laughs> you know. Would sriracha under your fingernails hurt, though? Would it burn? Yeah, of course it would. I guess that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's like putting salt into your wounds, right? Same kind yeah, of dude, have you ever, like, gotten anything stuck under your fingernails at all? It like, hurts. Like dirt? No. No, like slivers and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, but that's actually like a physical object that can pierce. Sriracha you. is also it's not a, this is not an idea. This isn't well, this is an actual well, thing. I think we should do it. <laughs> we should test it out. All right. Well, let's go. <laughs> I guess you, have you uh, volunteered for the mm, sure. as tribute? Well, I think you're the host, so you should do it. No, I comment on while it's happening. So you have well, to you do it. Doesn't mean you can't do both. Yes, it does. That's exactly what it means. I'll do it to you, and you can. And then it, I can I can do a live read as to exactly. what is what is happening. You can yeah exactly yeah that sounds great. Oh wait, no it doesn't. No it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you know what, vaping is annoying. Vaping has actually made me respect smokers more. Because now that they have the option of vaping, but they're still smoking, you're kind of like I, I like that guy. Yeah, he's not. Well, because he, I mean it's it's because he's not vaping. That's why I like him. Okay, it's like. Uh, I can't think of anything of what it's like. I don't know. I'm but it's weird. I I'm mean, we, we used to not like smokers. Yeah. Because we thought that they were, like, annoying. Yeah. But now we have something more annoying that's more common. It's not more common, I guess, but it's getting common, and that's vaping. I don't mind, like, smoke. Well, it's really obnoxious. Like, the amount of yeah. vapor that comes out of their mouths is yeah. really obnoxious. I guess it's Are more, you a fog machine? It's more of a time and place. Like, if, if someone's doing it, like, you know, in the corner... Like away from people, he's trying to actually not right. bother anybody. That's fine. Yeah, but like people who are like deliberately blowing smoke everywhere. I'm yeah, and they go, "Well, it's not smoke, bruh." Yeah, it's like, "Well, I don't care, bruh." Same thing. Yeah, they, I a, mean, they, they they won't let you do it on planes either, yeah, even though it's, it's not smoke. It's not actually the smoke itself or the or the vapor itself. It's it's basically the, the gesture behind it. Yeah, yeah, and you, you're a douche. Yeah. That's really what it is. Yep. Vaping is like, I mean, if you ask someone, do they vape, you could probably deduce some other things about their lives that, like, they probably wear tap-out clothing, <laughs> or, you know, they, what else do people that vape, they probably wear flat-brim hats with the stickers still on them. Oh, yeah. And that's not in style anymore, I don't think. Is it? Yeah, I haven't seen that as much. People still wear hats, but not with the stickers on them. People still. I work. guess that's because I don't go to BYU anymore. But that's true. Me. That maybe I don't go there anymore either. All right. As I get older, I suddenly hate young people more than I used to, and I've always hated teenagers. But now I especially hate teenagers. Yeah. I was in the mall the other day, and there was this pack of Mexican girls with longboards. I didn't know longboarding was still a thing. There's Do people this... still longboard? I've seen people with really short skateboards now. That, they're they're like no, two that, feet long. That was that was two years ago. Still the short skateboards? Yeah, really? Yeah. I think longboards. I don't think they'll ever completely go away, but they're not as popular as they used to be. I mean, there's there's this there's this uh, lady that around my neighborhood. Uh-huh. She has a big, huge German Shepherd. Just yeah. pulls her around and leaves long. Or she's and she's going fast. I would love for her to hit a pebble. Yeah, and just eat it. I never feel bad for people that that happens to. It's like, well, what do you expect? Every year, some someone like dies. I think they expect to not crash. Well, yeah, of course, but that's because they weren't thinking. Every year, somebody dies like hiking, and then you find out that they like went off by themselves onto this trail, yeah. and were being a dick, and then they fall and die. And okay, you know, that's a tragedy. Thoughts and prayers, but. I don't, I don't think longboarding is smart. Hiking, like, hiking is stupid. It's like too. riding. It's like riding a motorcycle at night without a helmet. Without a helmet. If you longboard with like the protective gear, I think that. I think even then. I mean, don't get me wrong. You don't look cool at all. Yeah. And nobody's gonna like your Instagram pages, and the honeys aren't gonna line up. Well. Do honeys like helmets? Not for the helmets. Yeah. 
I don't know. I feel like they always have groupies, those type of people. I need to find someone who longboards and ask them. I bet you don't have any friends at longboard. I, That's not your style. I am 100%. Sure. If you are my friend at longboard, let me know so I can quickly stop being your friend. <laughs> I wonder if I do. Uh, I don't think so. I clean house pretty pretty frequently. Yeah. yeah. Wait, so what's the what's the correct answer for this one? Oh, for this one? Uh, the correct answer is being someone with a room who's, who's vaping because, because having Sriracha is, is, is you suffering without any outlet. You can't be mad at anyone. Mm. Being a is vaping. You have a direction for your anger, the person who's vaping and you can inflict pain on them. As far as I know. Okay. I made up, I, I'm making up the rules right now as to. You didn't give much thought. These questions weren't that good. No, they were. They weren't. Was this your idea? No, I said it's the email. Oh. <laughs> Listen. Well, we need some better ones for the future. Yeah, seriously, come on, people. Yeah, I'm, I can't be the only comedic we can't, talent. We, Latham can't give you a good show if if, uh, if we don't commit to giving good answers, good questions. Good questions, yeah. It's like it's like uh, teaching a lesson. It's important to have good answers. Good, good, good questions. Just read the manual. <laughs> read preach my gospel. Yeah, so... So, yeah, well... Hey. They can't all be gold. I mean, I really do appreciate the effort, though. And the thought. But, again, I mean, these, are com- these questions are probably coming from people with lives. And you can't... Maybe they're first-hand experiences. It could be. Yeah. Why, why would they have sriracha injected into their fingernails? It's pretty creative. Maybe they like that kind of stuff, you know? Mm. Maybe they have like a safe word, too. Sriracha? No, no, because that, that would confuse the person doing it. <laughs> they wouldn't know what that means. It'd have to be something like fruit bat or something that wouldn't come up in normal conversation. Unless you're huh. a zoologist, and then fruit bat might come up in a normal conversation. Yeah. Fruit bat. I'll have to use that one. Yeah, you, your, your next safe word is, <laughs> is fruit bat. <laughs> so, uh, Alan and I, we we were going to go have dinner with a friend tonight up in Salt Lake City. Uh, Dedevis, good friend of ours from our mission. Well, not so good anymore. Yeah, well, not after tonight. Uh, we were supposed to meet him at 6 o'clock. What time did he text you and say he like, couldn't come? Like five thirty. <laughs> no, at, at five thirty he texted you. Yeah. How well, come... I, just didn't, I just didn't look at my phone till five forty-five. No, 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 no. Because remember, we were driving around. So we we were like, it was like five fifty-five by the time you told me. Yeah. He sent that. Okay. Well, I just didn't look at my phone. I think okay. So this is actually your fault. Well. Okay. <laughs> Listen. I'm listening. I'm all ears. He knows we're coming from from Provo. All to Salt Lake. That's, he should know. He's been to Utah many times. And I'm that's sure true. He's Actually, that's, he knows how long it's going to take for us to get to Salt Lake. Good point. We need more than a 30-minute notice. Yeah. Like, text me at like 3 or 4. Yeah, because you know? well, his mom was... Not this, this was like his last day his mom was there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that happened. And then we were going to meet up with another good friend of ours, Williams. Sup, Williams? But being the wonderful husband he is, he was going to spend... Uh, his night off with his wonderful wife, whom I love and not have any sort of negative emotions towards for taking my best friend and any of that kind of stuff. But but on our way up there, Alan, you were you told me that uh, your wife got a glimpse of the of the show. Yeah. In the last episode, where I was really ripping into the ladies. Yeah. I wasn't actually. I wasn't ripping into them. I was. I was telling them how to make more money. I was you helping ex- them. You exposed them. Yeah. And what did I expose them about? About. Uh... About what men want from women, and, and their strategy for <laughs> for 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 chipping away at your soul exactly slowly. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I can relate and I can not relate to what you said, but <laughs> but I think I think she was mainly mad because uh, because I w- because you were right. Yeah, I I wiki leaked it. I mean, truth only. It I mean it hurts because it's true. Right? right, right. The wicked take the truth to be hard. Yeah, is that's that right. is that what what yeah. that book says? Yeah. What's that book called? Mm. It's not the Bible, right? No. Or something else? 
I don't know. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, you know, you ladies, you're in deep trouble now. Now that I've exposed your your methods to to guys, you got to come up with new ones. Yeah. To slowly crush their spirits. Any recommendation? Is this another how-to? Uh, no, no. I'm not going to aid the enemy. Okay. Excuse me, I'm gassy. Um... I just thought that was funny. Obviously, it's not funny to the people listening right now, but it was funny at the moment when we were talking about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, she... Uh, <laughs> that, that was the first thing she told me when I saw her after... <laughs> after like, it was on top of her list to tell me that, <laughs> hey, Latham broke the code. He's a jerk. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> She's calling all her friends. Red lights are going off. They know. <laughs> A war room opens up and she's texting and emailing yeah. everyone. You know those Facebook alerts you get when like, <laughs> yeah. there's something yeah. nearby going on? Right, right. That, all the, all, yeah. Every single female is like, Latham exposed us for what we are. <laughs> <laughs> woo, woo, woo! <laughs> PC principal. Oh yeah, so you know, let's let's talk, Let's. I guess we could talk a little bit about that. You know, this was... Before, before we left, Alan came over, we watched the PC principal episode of South Park and uh, that's a good one, and it reminded me of something I saw on the Daily Wire today um, about microaggressions. And Alan, uh, I'm, I am I'm, you don't know what am I? You've never heard of a microaggression, is no, that correct? I don't I don't know what that means. Okay, well let's go is to that Wiki- even a real word. It is. Let's go to Wikipedia real quick and get the Wikipedia definition of what a microaggression is. Should you go to like Webster's or something? I don't think it's in Webster's. Well, it's not a word. Neither is shut up, but I say it all the time. Okay. It's two words. Idiot. <laughs> okay. okay, so according to Wikipedia, microaggression is a term coined by psychiatrist and Harvard University professor Chester M. Pierce in 1970 to describe insults and dismissals he regularly witnessed <sighs> non-black Americans inflict on African Americans. Um, in 1973, MIT economist Mary Rowe extended the term to include similar aggressions directed at women and those of different abilities, religions, etc. She also used the word micro inequity to describe an in- inequitable treatment of another person in a manner that is not overtly aggressive, yet which might stem from neg- negligence, ignorance, or what we now call unconscious bias. Eventually, the term came to encompass the casual degradation of any mar- socially marginalized groups, such as the poor and the disabled. So, let's get. So that's kind of hard to understand. Let's yeah, summarize this. that for all three of us listening. <laughs> <laughs> that tuned out for those past twenty yeah, seconds. Yeah. Uh, Let's see if I can find some good examples. Okay. Um, I'm not sure there will be any in... Okay, we'll just go to the Daily Wire. So on the Daily Wire, which is a conservative uh, internet news source, Purdue University has a business course. And in this business course, it's Management 301. Um they were given a list of microaggressions, things that they that that they're not allowed to say because it's microaggressions. One of them is, America is a melting pot. Can't say that. Yeah. So, what happens if you say it? Well, just just think think about why you think someone would take offense that America is a melting pot. Why would someone take offense to that? They, okay, exactly. So let's let's go let's go to that. So. Um, it says, students were assigned a list of microaggressions such as, where are you from? I don't even, I can't. People get offended when they get asked where they're yeah, from? let me think about why that would be a microaggression. Maybe they're not from anywhere. Um, another one is, there's only one race, the human race. That's a microaggression. And I believe the most qualified person should get the job. This is great. They were advised to stay away from these statements because they promote the myth of meritocracy. Or imply that race or gender does not play a role in life successes. Of course it does. Right. So, right. So, and that, that and that's what they're arguing. They're saying that race or gender does play a role in life and in life successes. Is this a white guy that wrote this? That wrote the article? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, no. I don't know. Pardes Saleh. I don't know. If so he's... no. Do you think race and gender play an important part in your life successes? Yeah. Well, you're wrong. So, there's that. Well, I think to some extent, it doesn't really define, you know, what you're capable of in the future. But I think for the time being, like, 
Like for me, I often get sometimes profiled. Because you're stupid and they think you're yeah, retarded? Yeah. No, because I look Asian. You are half Asian. So exactly. You, yeah, okay. So, so so what's the point? So there's some so there's pros and cons about um What are the cons different? What are the cons of being an Asian? Exactly. All right. Yeah. So. Well 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 yeah. People people stereotype you, people like, hey, that kid's good at math. Let's ask him all the math questions. And I suck at math. So that Did that hurt your feelings. That's really disappointing for me because when people <laughs> ask me about math It's disappointing to me too. I can't help them. <laughs> great yeah well i mean it, it's not saying that you're that you're li- that you're especially in america that yeah that your opportunities are limited yeah but you know people are going to think what they want and who cares i mean you have to just go with who you are and... well yeah well that that's fine but what, what 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 these microaggressions are saying is that um well first off they have this they they promote the quote-unquote myth of meritocracy and that's not a myth. That's an actual thing yeah. that actually exists. Um, and that race or gender does not play a role in life successes. Well, first you have to define what a life success is. Well, that's different for everybody. Exactly. And so race or gender does not play a role. And so if race or gender does play a role in life successes, um, I need to find out You which... can't measure what the end goal is if you don't know what the end goal is. What's a life success? Well, yeah. How do you so, define that? Right. Well, they haven't defined it. Well, this is this article is stupid. The article is not stupid. The people that the people believe, who wrote the article is stupid. No, the people that believe in the microaggressions are stupid. Okay, we can. Well, well, everybody is stupid. <laughs> yeah, we we can agree <laughs> on that. Um, okay, so we, okay, so so we just learned that that race is important. No, right? I didn't learn anything. So we we just pretended to learn. Yeah, let's put it that way. We talked about. According to the business class, being colorblind is also problematic. Because it indicates that a white person does not want to or need to acknowledge race. Um, one student was quoted as saying, I felt I was being brainwashed with political correctness and shamed because of my race. Um, the course is called Diversity Issues in the World of Work and was created by a human resource and training specialist, Alvin Lee Jr. Now, so these other microaggressions were, list- were listed in the class assignment. These are not microaggressions. The, the microaggressions, these are just really rude. One of them is you don't act like a normal black person, you know. Like that's like really offensive. Yeah. <laughs> that's mean. That's I mean that's offensive. That and that's coming from me. Yeah. You know I can agree that if someone said to a, if someone of any race, you don't act like a normal black person. You don't act like a normal whatever. You know. Yeah. Like that's really rude. This next one is. So what do you guys? This is great. So what do you guys speak in Japan? Asian. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of uh, American Dad episode where they he he goes and he adopts a. He goes, we've adopted a Chinese baby. Japanese, to be specific. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I wonder... So so here's another microaggression they list. I think that's something that really irritates Asians. I I think it does, too. Like, you know, I think think most people classify Asians as being Chinese. Yeah. Because I remember when I first moved from Japan, you know, being young, Mm -hmm. I was seven when I moved out here to the States. Yeah. And I was always, people who didn't work in my class and like didn't really know me. Yeah. They would, they would classify me as the Chinese kid. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't blame them. They didn't know any better. They're, right. They're, they're, they're elementary school kids. Right. And you're not a pussy. So. Yeah. And like, you know, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. But I think that's something that might bother like others. Like weak little crybabies? Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Um, but like, as people grow up, that's something to be conscious of too. Yeah. Well, life's tough. Yeah. Get over it. Um, Here's another one from University of California President Janet Napolitano's office to discourage students from using the expression America is the land of opportunity because it it is a microaggression. Um, It sounds like microaggressions are are just opinions. Microaggressions are things that people it's basically you saying something and you have zero intent to offend someone but someone takes offense that's what a microaggression is okay right okay so at my brother's law school garrett i went to a talk uh one of the attorneys from fire which is which is first amendment rights in education they're a law firm that 
basically sticks up for college students' rights to say whatever they want. Um, a couple schools started... Have you ever heard of trigger warnings? Yeah. Okay, so... Trigger warnings and microaggressions are like in the same same category. And he, he mentioned that this teacher being... Um, what's the word? Soft. It's not soft. What's the freaking word? She was sympathetic. Sympathetic to these microaggressions and trigger warnings. So in her class, she put trigger warnings before all of her books and assignments and said, you know, this book has this in it. And the blah, 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 blah. And she started getting a lot of complaints because she was forgetting some trigger warnings, uh, which included one of them was I remember the, the guy saying colonialism, mm-hmm. colonialism. <laughs> like this, well, apparently one student was triggered at colonialism, and I, I don't know, maybe I don't know what I, I just I, I mean. So, so the the guy was talking about and why that's a problem, and that is because because tr- anyone can be offended at everything. You have to put down literally everything the book and is in the book as a trigger warning. Colonialism. Yeah. What's to be offended there? Colonialism was awesome. I think people get offended too easily. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if it offends you, that's okay. But you don't have to make a big deal out of it and yeah, like, keep, stop reading the book. Or... Keep offended. Keep keep it to yourself. Yeah, I'm offended all the time. Yeah, people don't teenagers, especially if it's like college, like university, university published work. Yeah, these professors and writers aren't writing crap to to piss people and, and students off deliberately. You know? Right, right. So, for example, well, let's get to this last paragraph. Tell. So this is a quote. Uh, tell America's land of, and this is why America's land of opportunity is a microaggression. Tell America's land of opportunity to black people who were enslaved and brought over here. Tell that to Native Americans who had their lands taken away from them. Tell that to Japanese Americans during World War II who were incarcerated in concentration camps. It's inspirational to hear that type of statement from a person who truly believes it, but it is not when you look at reality in the history of the United States. So one of the great, great comments of this article is... Uh, Someone referring to to when they say, tell America's land of opportunity to black people who were enslaved and brought over here. He responds, I can't. They all died a very long time ago. One other person says, if someone started that microaggression garbage with me, I'd start using macroaggressions. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so a microaggression, and you know what, if we go back to the Wikipedia, Wikipedia page, I wonder if we can find it. Um, but there was one of them... Um, that said, like, if there's a group of white people in a room and a black person walks in, all those white people are performing a microaggression just by being there, right? Um, I, I can't find them. Yeah, well, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> but, you know, these microaggressions, these trigger warnings... And I mean, that's all related. What it is, is it's a bunch of people who get offended way too easily and then feel the need to take, because they don't want to be offended, to take away everyone's freedom of speech. With these people who get easily offended, how what percentage would you say these people are just voicing their opinions just to get attention? Well, all of them are. And it's a very, very small vocal minority. Yeah. Most, I, I mean... At least, I'm very pessimistic by nature, but I would like to be optimistic and think not a lot of people feel this way. But BuzzFeed put out a couple weeks ago a video about... They asked non-white people what they felt when they heard the video, or the uh, word white. And it was all like, privilege, and... You know what, let's just pull it up. Let's pull it up. Oh, white I hate, people. Man, I, I hate white people. Man. I hate BuzzFeed, actually. It used to be funny before it got all political. Yeah. BuzzFeed is funny. Sometimes. I mean, not anymore. Um, okay, yeah. So people of color from around the world respond to white. So, the, so Audacity is not going to pick that up. But I wonder if we can get the subtitles. Yeah. Okay. So when you hear the word white, what comes to mind? Let's see what these people say. Yeah, take some deep breaths first. 
the 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 oh well i get okay i've already got it. i'll get subtitles people of color respond to white blah 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 let's see how many dislikes this video has bad oh look at that <laughs> <laughs> i can't oh they've already got subtitles i don't need to put that on what is that one to three for dislikes oh yeah Think of Iggy so Zale. this guy is Native American and white. Hold on, this this woman is N- Nagua Pui, Aotearoa, Bunda Juling, Spanish and Irish. So it's not a skin color; it's a way of thinking. Sylvia is Kenyan American. Okay, when I think about white, I think about maybe a group of people who I would love to be in harmony with, but don't always feel that they feel the same way towards me. Angeline is Wira Jury and Ewan. She is white. She says it's white run controlled system. And Mira B, who looks like he hasn't yet hit puberty. <laughs> He's like eleven years old. Yeah. Why do we care what kids think? I hate when people <laughs> I hate when people bring kids into a political discussion. It's like, go home and play Pokemon and yeah. eat f- fruit snacks and shut up. Well Yeah. Well they can provide a naive, kind of genuine, pure answer. No. Not in well, politics. Well, okay. You're, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, if you, you, if you want to ask a kid, like, okay, so there was a video. I, I, I wish I could find the other video, but this woman. You watch a lot of videos. I have a lot of free time right now. Okay. Work's kind of slow. Shut up. <laughs> hey, ladies. I have a lot of free time to obsess over you, so hey. <laughs> if you have low self-esteem and need someone to obsess over you, I'm your guy. Um, that was with Steven Crowder and this woman, her husband decided that he wasn't happy as a man. And he's going to become a... Well, he's just going to identify as one. I'm not sure if they were going to cut his pee-pee off and, you know, push it inside his body and make a fake vagina. Um, but she was explaining have, it... Have you seen a video about that? A sex change? Yeah. Yeah. When Mr. Garrison gets a sex change, they kind of put some in the episode. It's a brutal, brutal thing. Uh, Doesn't surprise me. Yeah. It's pretty violent. Like, Is it? I haven't seen anything like that. We'll watch it. We'll watch it one after this. Okay. But anyways, her three, four-year-old daughter's in the back, and she's explaining to her daughter, like, how do you feel about daddy becoming a, a mommy? And, of course, she's four. What the hell does she know? Yeah. So she's like, yeah, this is great. I love daddy. And she's like, well, it's not daddy. It's, it's mommy number it's another, two. It's another mommy. Yeah. And, but, okay, but, but by the way, she's four. What does she know? What's going to happen when she's 14? And her dad wearing... Well, I guess, you know what? If her dad's wearing a dress when she's 14... I mean, that's that's 14 years from now. That'll probably be pretty normal. That's 10 years from now. Okay, I guess, yeah. Uh, you, you, <laughs> proved, you proved me right you're once tonight. A, you're an idiot. Oh, 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 and you're bad at math, you dumb Asian prick. Of course you're good at math. You're Asian. Quiz me on something. Two plus two. Yeah, that's what I thought. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what the Pythagorean theorem is right now. That's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, so you're good at math. Yeah. Well, stereotypes are true. I know a formula. <laughs> well, what what's more to know, Mister Stats Major? No. Well, until you gave up, it was hard. Ah, uh, you're preaching to the choir, buddy. <laughs> Going on chance number three. Um, what are we talking about? How much I hate kids? Yeah, kids, shut up. Okay. <laughs> if and by the way, if you're 18 and you think that you should be voting, you shouldn't. Don't vote. Come to me. I'll give you five bucks. Don't vote. You're stupid. You are. You're a teenager and you're stupid. Why would they come to you and give you five bucks? No, I'm going to give them five bucks so they oh, don't vote. Okay. Well, how about you just have them vote for whoever you want them to vote for? I No, I don't. I, it's a principal thing. I don't want them voting. Well, might as well get some some uh, some value out of your five dollars. Yeah, I am. Them not voting. They're not, they're not going to take that principle to heart they're not gonna think about it two seconds later i don't care i just don't want them not voting okay well that's fine i know it is <laughs> <laughs> what are we okay before i start talking about how much i hate kids what are we talking about oh yeah so microaggressions are stupid trigger warnings are stupid and uh and you're stupid yeah oh i guess we we're talking about that because we got onto labels and i so I was the, when I when I found that pack of uh, 
Mexican teenage girls with their longboards. I had just come out of a music store and bought the new Lamb of God album, Sturm and Sturm und Drang, I guess. Is that how you say are and from, in German? Are they from Germany? No. No. They just decided to give a crappy title to their crappiest album ever. Oh. And I put the CD in my car and I was listening to it on the way home and it sucked. Every track sucked. They were all sound, they all sounded the same. And was I was saying in German or something? Is that why they named it? No, no. It's it's an English. They're an English band. I mean they're an American band. Yeah. But I don't know why they called it Sturm und Drang. I I don't know how it's pronounced. I don't even know what it I means. Know. I know that British guy we had as a teacher talked about it once or twice. Didn't he? What British guy? Uh the guy with the bow tie. He taught us about music and stuff. What? Remember that class that you never showed up to? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. At BYU. Music. Yeah. Music 201. 201. Yeah. I think he was Australian, by the way. That dude was British. No. Yes, he was. No, he wasn't. What was his name? It was I think it was Michael something. No, his name was uh, Dr. Howard. I bet you 10 bucks Dr. Howard is from England. All right, you're on. Okay. You're on. Shake my hand. Right. I, hope I, I hope I win. Look him up. Dr. Howard BYU. Music, Luke Howard. Oh, there you go. Son oh, of a bitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it said, no, it says that he began his formal music studies in Sydney, Australia. Yeah. doesn't say that's, that's where he's from. That's because he's from Sydney. I don't believe that's true. Where is he from? All right. Well, does it say anything about him going to school in in England? It's, yeah, but you don't have to be from England to go to school in England. Is there any reference? Do a, do a command F. Type in England. Yeah. Bam. What does it say? There's one. He has held conferences in England. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> no, it's not. Really. Where is you're he, where you're is American, he? and the only description of America you have in your bio is you had a conference there. Is that enough information? No, I'm right. Ten bucks. I'm not giving you ten bucks, you son of a bitch. Oh, it's just the same bullcrap. Yeah, well, he's Australian. Why would someone from, from England... Go to Australia for school. Dude, tons of people probably do that. Tons of people? Yeah. Name one. This guy. <laughs> Dr. Luke Howard. That's who. <laughs> name Benjamin name another one. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Quincy. No. Quincy McTavish. No. That's Scottish, I guess, isn't it? All right. So anyways... Getting into that rant. I was just pissed off, you know, and this so the lead singer of Lamb of God, who keeps screwing up all of their good all of their albums, basically said in an interview a couple couple weeks ago that he doesn't like to be defined. He doesn't like labels because that puts him in a box and so he can he feels like he, he his his expression is restricted. And uh, I hate that because people who don't like putting on who won't don't who feel like that they're not that they don't like putting on labels or whatever that just means they hate their label and they're stupid. That's all it means. Yeah. Well, by doing so, you're actually putting yourself in another label. Titled, That's true. Unlike Un- labels. Yeah. Unlabeled. Yeah. <laughs> Which is even worse because now I don't even know if I... I don't know. Uh, labels are great because it. I can immediately discern if I should like you or not. Exactly. Okay. No one looks in the unlabeled section. Yeah. It's like if someone has a of an Obama bumper sticker, you don't want to be their friend or associate with them, mm-hmm. you know, You're or a coexist them. or a coexist bumper sticker. You don't want to hang out with those people. Yeah. And that's good because they don't want to hang out with you too. So now you mutually know that you don't want to associate with each other. Right. That's why labels are good. I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I agree with you. Should I disagree with you? No, you should Fun. always agree with me because I'm always right. Well, I'll disagree with you there. Okay, well, that's... was so you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what are some other labels that... that would be good to know about people immediately, you know? That you could... Like, if if, if, if people wore a t-shirt with labels on them that described them... Yeah. And you could discern, like... Like, I play World of Warcraft. <laughs> Is that a good label? I wouldn't mind being friends with those people. Really? My little brother played World of Warcraft. Yeah. Well, I guess 
some people are cool. Like Park played World of Warcraft. No, it was Starcraft. Oh, was it? Yeah. Same no. same thing. No, he played World no, of Warcraft. No, he didn't. He played Starcraft. He played both. No, he didn't. I'm right. How much do you want to bet? I, I'm not <laughs> listen. We're, we're going to text him right... You know, I'm going to text him right now. Okay. And we'll figure it out. Okay. I hope he's still awake. Probably is. What are so? I, I'm trying to think of some other things that I wish people would tell me right off the bat. Girls with, like... Weird colored hair, that's a pretty good signal. Like non natural hair colors. Okay. You know. Man buns? Man buns. Toms. <laughs> Those queer shoes that, that suck. I'm wearing Toms. Right exactly. Now. I know. At least you're wearing socks with them, though. Yeah. Well, Pe- I, I don't like tying shoes. That's just too much effort for me, so these are good. You slip on. It's really the main reason why I have them. Cause okay. I just hate tying shoes. All right. I guess I can let that pass. I mean, other shoes out there that don't that don't require laces that are aside from Tom's slippers, moccasins. Yeah, but you can't go outside wearing that. Yeah, you can. Slippers? Yeah. Why not? You can't go to work wearing slippers. Why? It's Is not there a rule? Well, oh, Tom's are professional. They look like regular shoes. Maybe if you're a jackass. Okay, well, I'm fine with that label. <laughs> <laughs> this labeling thing is hard. Yeah. Mm. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. How long is this crappy show going? This is this has been a bad show. This has been a good show. Has it been a good show? Who knows? You just, should know. We're just a little over an hour. Dude, I just, we just, I just ramble. I got a text from Hilton today saying, uh. Oh, you did? Yeah, my show keeps him sane. So, thank you, Hilton. That was sweet. Shout out to Hilton. Hilton's a good kid. Yeah, you should have him on one of these days. Yeah, well, he's, again, he's one of those busy, productive adults. Hmm. So he's got a wife. What's he up to? He's in New York, being all fancy and working and stuff. He must make bank. He does, he but it's New York. New York, so he doesn't get so to keep a lot of it. <laughs> A lot of it goes to pay for, for existing in New York. Yeah. But that's, I guess, what happens. That's cool. I wonder if Park's gotten back to me. No. Nope. He's yeah. probably asleep. It's, Is it it's, 10? it's midnight there. Yeah, it's 10 here. Jeez. You probably got to get going soon, huh? Well, yeah. What time yeah. does Eleanor go to sleep? She's probably asleep by now. Is Amy home? I don't know. Let's see. Is this good pod, guys? I was having a... Oh, she's in bed. 45 minutes ago. She's in bed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't even get to see her today, so... Oh, I... well, you'll see, we'll see her when you get home. Well, she's, she's in bed now. Okay, well, are you going to be sleeping in the same bed? No. You don't sleep in the same bed as your wife? Oh, as my wife? Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were talking about my, my daughter. Did you say Eleanor? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said Amy. Yeah, she, no, yeah Eleanor's in bed. She goes to bed... She goes to bed like, what, Around, eight? No, like nine or ten. So, oh, so she'll sleep in later. Yeah. Yeah. So she takes two naps. She usually takes one around 11 or 12. Uh-huh. What time does uh, she wake up? Around eight. It's about my schedule, too. Right when I leave. I wake up at work. eight. Tw- 11 or 12, I get a little tired. Yeah, so she'll I... sleep. Like, some days she'll sleep for like an hour. Some days she'll sleep for like three hours. Uh-huh. So depending on how long her nap is, um, she gets fussy again in the afternoon. We'll, we'll put her down. I mean, she's okay without seeing you for a day, though. Yeah. Because. We'll see. What does she care? Should care. I hope she cares. You're just mom number two, as far as she's concerned. Yeah. She's never seen a strong male role model in the house, so. It's because you're not there. <laughs> that is exactly my point. That is the point I was going to make. And screw you for making it for me. Yeah. Beat you to the punter. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. Burn on you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, should we call it quits while we're ahead? Well, is there yeah. anything else you want to talk about? That toilet bit we got into in the car was pretty funny, but I don't know how to work it into it now. Well, you just did. That, that was a great segue, by the way. I was th- thank you. Rolfing was on my case about transitions, so. Was he? <laughs> yeah. He said you needed better transitions, and I said, oh, yeah, well, screw you. No, I said, that's a good, that's a good point, I do. Why is that important, though? Transitions. Yeah. It just smooths things out. So? 
If you're gonna talk about two things, why do they, why do they have to link so, together? It's just it just it, it makes it for a better listening experience. All right, well, all right. Do not your, that do you would, not that you would know anything about that. Do your thing. Do your so, anyways, thing. on the way over here, I forgot. How did we get on the topic of it? But you had to take a poop. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I did <laughs> for like a half hour. It was I was struggling, but uh, you know, in America we have this clean bowl filled with clean water, and then we poop in it. And then after we poop in it too much, we clean it so that we can poop into a clean bowl. <laughs> and then we have you know people all over the world, their biggest concern is clean water. And then in America, we, we, we just take a bowl of it and we just poop in it. Yeah. And we pee in it, too. I mean, we pee. Like, why do I have to pee in water? I, I think it uh, dampens the smell. Doesn't it? I have I have no idea, because at like the Grand Canyon, some national parks, they have these waterless urinals. Those stink. I don't I don't know. Well, don't. the water dampens the smell and it flushes it away, right? But can't you just like angle the pipe so that it just flows it into just it? Shoots right down. Into yeah. The it would still smell because it would like it was like it would cling to the walls. All of right, the pipes so put some uh, squeeze some lemon juice in there. <laughs> That's too much work. Lem- I don't have the bowl. There should be the a le- there should be a lemon zester that you can just like <laughs> scrape a lemon down after you pee. Like at In and Out, where they have those those uh, fry cutters below yeah, the wall, exactly something similar like that above your toilet. Yeah. I guess lemon juice is more expensive than water, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's what an interesting thing. And we were talking about how we often have sometimes, you know, like maids. Yeah. Come clean the bowl you poop into. Right. But before you have her clean your poopy bowl, you have to kind of clean it so she doesn't judge you for your poop. For your diarrhea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for the one stuck to the side that you go, that was some, you know, that was barbecue and like three milkshakes and I had to get home and it was running out. Literally running out, if you know what I'm talking about. And you, yeah. Cool. That's what a what a first world problem. Yeah. Our clean bowls of poop are. Well, I think that's it. I think we're running out of <laughs> I think we're running out of steam. <laughs> so thank you guys for listening. Um I think you should have a, another Facebook poll. Um, I do Facebook polls all the time. I don't no, like another category. Oh, okay. What kind? Say what would you like Latham to talk about? Oh that's a that's or, not a, that's or, not or a bad topics, one. yeah, for you to, for you to address. All right. Someone sent me an email. Lisa, you sent me an email. I haven't looked yet uh, because um, I have this thing where I'm afraid of emotions. And so anytime someone sends me an email and it has any sort of uh, something where I'll have to emotionally react, I generally avoid it as much as I can. But I'm going to look at your email tonight. It's like looking at your grades. Yeah, just don't look at them. Yeah. Or your bank account. Well, I get a look at that. Well, you do. I don't. Yeah, if it's trending upwards, then it's fun to look at. It has your, is yours trending upwards? Yeah. Really? Well, yeah. Well, graduated from college a year ago, and it, it's only going to go up. Yeah, but you got bills to pay. Yeah, I already have bills to pay. Now you have a wife, you have a wife and a kid. No. My living costs have remained the same. Your living costs after buying a home have remained the same? Yeah. Your mortgage is the same as your rent before? Uh, that's a little bit more expensive. <laughs> But but my salary is outweighing the difference between rent one and rent two. Oh. It's outweighing. Do you understand the English language? It's, it's, that's it's, a microaggression because you're. Yeah, what yeah, are you? Very offensive. Taiwanese. Yeah. Chinese. Ching Jong Bing Bong. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad. When when I'm not in debt, that's when I'll be. As I as you know, the years have kind of not been so good to me. That is to say, I haven't been so good to them. And I used to like want like a lot of money and live comfortably. Mm-hmm. Now if I can be out of debt and have $30,000 a year, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, it's a lot of money for a single person. Yeah. I'm a simple man with simple needs. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, like a man needs less money than a woman, obviously, to yeah. survive, right? Right. So it's like if you make thirty grand for yourself, yeah. that's really like you're making sixty grand as, as, as a pair. Or even like seventy or eighty grand because women require that much more money. Right. 
So, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Plus, it's pretty cheap to live here in Utah. 30K yeah. doesn't go a lot other places, but... Yeah. Well, it might. <laughs> okay. Thanks for shitting on my point. <laughs> worst guest ever <laughs> get the hell out of my show <laughs> but alan does live close by and he's easily accessible so he will be on the show again whether he wants to or not okay well next time we gotta prepare a little bit better because yeah but this this went pretty good without without any preparation Did it? i thought so we've been flapping our gums for going on an hour and 15 minutes i'm just self-critical of myself so i guess i need to be i need to be more prepared well, we tried to prepare, but all the ideas you came up with were stupid, so I had well, to prepare for everything. What? That's that's exactly the thing. What do what do we talk about? You you the thing is you don't want to talk about anything interesting because everything you like is stupid. Okay. Well, <laughs> why are we friends? <laughs> that's a good question. Why are we friends? We're not friends. We established that we're acquaintances at the very beginning. Yeah, that's true. If you called me at like three a.m. and said, "Hey, will you come get me?" I'd go. You no. Probably, you, no, you couldn't get me. I would, yeah, I would. I'd say you, we're we're getting Taco Bell after this, but, and, you're, <laughs> and, you're and you're paying for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Next time we, yeah, next time we, you know, not preparing. It's it's got a it's actually, uh, yeah. It, 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 sometimes it flows better. Anyway. It's a quaint thing, but we tried to come up with a list of things we hate, but we already talked about everything. And you know what? Next time we just can't. Go for a ride. You yeah. just have to come over. We just have to start recording because we already talked about all that stuff in the car. Yeah. It would sound too staged if we'd already talked about it. Yeah. And I don't like that. Yeah. Well, you told me to talk like no one's listening. Yeah, because no one is listening. <laughs> the question is, are you going to listen to this one? I'll listen to it. I can't stand to the sound of my own voice. Really? You don't yeah. listen to anything? I never listen to anything I record. I do a sound check at the beginning to make sure I'm not too close to the mic because I had a real problem before of being too close. I guess that's true. I don't like listening to my voice either. Well, because I sound like Garrett. Oh, really? And I hate that guy. Well, so, so I wonder how he. I wonder how he can listen to this show because he did say he listened to a couple of them. Garrett, if you're listening to this, you son of a bitch, tell James I said hi. Tell your wonderful wife I said hi. You go to hell. But also, tell me if it's how you can listen to my voice. And if it sounds like you. That's a good point. I looked in the mirror yesterday. I thought I was him. That's the dumbest thing I've heard all day. And I got depressed. Oh, okay. Because he's ugly. Dude, a couple times on the mission, I'd look in the mirror and I'd think, how the hell did Garrett get here? And I'd go, oh, wait. That's me. Well, are you... (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. That's such a good reaction. Well, okay. Well, who, who cares? That's the same reaction I gave you when when you called me uh, to confess your sins. Oh yeah. Oh, you know what? Maybe we should put those videos up. I don't have those videos. I have them. You got you got to give them to me. I Send oh, them I, to me. I will. Do you? I have yeah. I have a computer here. Do, do you have a USB? Yeah, I have two of them. Okay, I'll probably well because they're big and email is stupid and won't let me do it through email. Put it on the Dropbox or something. Dropbox? I'll just send them with you over Facebook. No, you can fine. just download them from there. That's fine. Yeah, I've, th- I've thought about putting those up. Because remember that song that Crompton yeah. wrote about uh, you? About me being gay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not that being gay is bad. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You don't watch Seinfeld. You've never seen Seinfeld, have you? I've seen a few episodes. Okay, well, you wouldn't. That's from Seinfeld. Anyways. Yeah, those videos of me confessing. Unfortunately, a lot of the videos we shot... Did Crocker show any videos while you went over there? While you're in DC? Not a whole lot. We mostly watched my videos. Oh really? Yeah, the well the uh the apology video and the uh the at the Allen song. I wanna make that my ringtone. <laughs> the Allen song? <laughs> yeah. We should make that. We gotta you know, we gotta do that. We gotta make that one your ringtone. That is good. Okay. I'm gonna have that play on your tombstone. On on repeat? Yeah, yeah, just all the time. <laughs> Forever. When you go back to visit my tombstone, all, all the other tombstones next to me are like three feet away. It just slowly creeped away from yeah. being annoying. Well, I'll just know where it is, because I'll just listen. It'll be like the Grinch listening for the for the song of the Who's. And then I can just go and be like, there it is. Yeah. 
But I don't think you're going to die before me. I'm pretty sure I'm going to die before you. Really? Yeah. We'll see. What is your ideal age uh, to die to at? Die at? 28. No, I'm just kidding. Um, 80. 80? 80. You that long? 80. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. That's a good number. And I, I just, something quick. I just want to like fall asleep while driving, go into a ditch, and boom. The correct answer is 79, so you were wrong. No, the correct answer is 80 because that's what I said. And everything I say is correct. Okay. What about you? How long do you want to live? 79. 79? Yeah. Why not just go to an even 80? I don't do that. <laughs> you don't do that. Okay. I don't do things for, to, to get attention or to to satisfy you know others around me. I go. I beat by. I go. Yeah, I'm not gonna go time. to 80. To, <laughs> uh, that's way too long for the people around me. Is 80. Why? Why do we like round numbers? Why can't nine be the optimal? Pro- or, uh, no. It is the optimal number, number for 69. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Well, all right. This show's running way too long. I'm about to episode. I'll talk about some stupid economics crap that no one gives a crap about. But eighty is the correct age. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, but okay. You can have your own opinion. That's a microaggression for me. <laughs> eighty is a microaggression. Yeah. PC principal. Woo woo woo. <laughs> I want that as my ringtone. Actually, I want to. I want to hear PC Principal every time my phone rings. <laughs> That'd get annoying pretty quickly. Yeah, it'd make me laugh though. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll put up that new poll. And the best, and you know what, the best answer will. Um, no, he, and here's how we'll decide that last one. Or er, so I will put it up, and anyone can add add an option. The one with the most votes regardless if it's good or not, is the one that I'll talk about. I'm pretty sure Brandon Robison will have a good one because his insulin pump is probably not working right. He's essentially a cyborg, and cyborgs always have bad ideas, like the Terminator. But we'll go with that. We'll get some new how-tos up for you next week. We'll talk about how to plan a first date, how to survive a bonfire and we'll i'll tell the ladies how to use facebook correctly so oh hey did you, you talk that. about you put a poll up the other the other day about um if someone tells you that you're gonna pick them oh up the nine. times did you oh, talk about that already no son of a bitch dude okay let's go that real quick i had a tour last week with uh young living people i had to pick them up at 10 i got and so the problem is i've got customers at two different properties yeah and so I'm going to pick these people up at 10. I've got the other customer at the other property. And I told her like 10.05, you know. I wait t- till 10.05 and these people aren't coming out. And I can't, they're, they're high ups. These are people that I can't be like, hey, move your ass. We got places to go. I just kind of have to sit there and take it. Yeah. So I then come down and I go grab the other woman at the other property. And she's kind of like, where, where have you been? Because it's now like 10.10. 10. Yeah. And I didn't want to say to her, your stupid friends are idiots and don't understand how a clock works. Instead I said, you know, oh, I'm so sorry that you're stupid. Yeah. But, so we go up and by the time I get back to the other property, these other people were like outside waiting. It's like, how, how is it so hard to be on time? Or text someone three hours before you realize you can't show up. Divas. The Divas. <laughs> <laughs> but that was it. That was it. It was just... And well, you know, I, the correct I, answer is obviously the time you told them. Yeah. Not 15 minutes before. Right. Not five minutes after. Right. But I'm telling every time I'm on tour, like, I have to say it at least five or six times what time we're leaving in the morning. Because the, the other problem, too, is I have to be there 15 minutes early. Yeah. Because I can't, regardless if they're late or not, I can't be late because I will get in trouble if I'm late. But they can take their stupid sweet time because they're a bunch of idiots. That doesn't add up. No, it doesn't. It's not fair. But what do I care? Like, I don't know why. I think that I just need to have more apathy. More apathy is what I have. I have a pretty good amount of apathy. Yeah. But some more would help. Like you. Yeah. Like, just give up. Like you have. I haven't given up. Yeah. I just don't care. It's the same thing. No. I choose not. I can't give up if I don't care to begin with. Well, giving up makes you not care. 
Which came first, the not giving up or the giving up or the not caring? Not That's caring. the question. The not caring. Well, if you don't care, then you can never give up. Exactly. So you went from being born to not caring? No. I don't give... I, I, uh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Eloquent. Eloquent <laughs> final words from our good friend Alan Bear. Thank you guys for listening. Have a good weekend. It's Friday. We'll get this up for they you. It's Friday. You're posting this on Friday. They know it's, you don't need to tell them. I'm posting it Thursday this. night and it'll be up Friday. I can't tell them it's Friday. I know they know it's Friday. It's in the obvious. Everyone states the obvious all the time. Well, that doesn't mean you have to do it. I don't like it. <laughs> you should cut it out. <laughs> I don't know how to freaking edit this. That's why I don't. It just it just plays. That's one thing. Like at the beginning of each of your each of your podcasts, you always say that. Hey everyone, today is uh, Tuesday, and uh, that's so, Tuesday. that's so. If there's something funny, they they can they can um, wait, they can remember it. I don't see that. Working. I hate when I go online. Like one day, this will be big. It won't, but I keep telling myself that. But you know, you listen to clips of like old Adam Carolla shows or something, and they'll say what day it is, and then you'll go, oh, what what, what year? What it's a Tuesday, but was it a Tuesday in June 2013, or was it Tuesday? No one's going to be listening to this I, twice. You are. Because I already effing talked about how to uh, deal with rejection, and you didn't listen to that one. I don't know. Nobody can deal with it. You know what? I don't need that kind of well, negativity. Well, I don't, I don't need to know. I think I tuned out for that section because I don't ever face rejection. That's true. You really never have been rejected, have yeah. you? So I tuned out there. Selective listening. Except that time Amy uh, kissed another guy on, on your mi- while you were out on your mission, so. Yeah, twice. <laughs> Did you hear that, Amy? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't uh, Crompton read your journal? Yeah. <laughs> Here was his night, right? So I went to bed at 1030 like a, like, like an obedient missionary. Right. He, sta- he stayed up, broke into my desk. Mm-hmm. Uh, broke into it? Was well, it locked? It was locked. Okay, so he opened your desk. He opened my desk. Okay. Reading through all my letters mm-hmm. and my, my journal. My well, journal. he doesn't know what it's like to be loved at that time, so. Yeah. I guess he needed some out, some sort of outlet or something. Yeah. Yeah, his perfect night was reading my letters in my journal for a couple minutes, mm-hmm. uh, grabbing a marker from his desk and drawing... Is that okay? Male is, it, on face. is this the night? So he did draw the penis on your face. Is this the <laughs> night where he found in your journal that you like wrote that you didn't like him or something? <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he's like super sad the next day. Yeah. Like, Alan, I thought you liked me, man. I was like, we were together for two transfers. The first transfer, I hated him. Yeah. And he hated me, which is fine. Well, I can see that. How I hate him or how he hated me? Both. Yeah. Yeah. How was the second transfer? Well, so. What happened was the night we got our transfer calls, mm-hmm. or didn't get them because yeah. neither of us were going anywhere. Right, we just like lost it. <laughs> we were like so distraught that neither of us were leaving. Dude, I was happy. Yeah, yeah, it was freaking sweet. Yeah, we were always bashing on each other the first transfer, the first six weeks. But afterwards, like after we hashed it out, like mm-hmm. we we talked for loudly after that transfer call that night with a with a raised voice. Huh? Yeah. Now look at you guys, best yeah. friends. Yeah, I still don't answer his phone call. <laughs> if you're listening. And he still doesn't call? call. Yeah, he doesn't call me anymore. He texted me the other day. And we kind of lost contact. But ah, Crompton would be a good guy on the show. I'll have to figure that out. <laughs> we got to talk about uh, how he how he goes about his phone etiquette. Yeah, the phone etiquette. Just that district together again would be good. Yeah. Yeah. How about I end it for real this time? Okay, wrap it up. What are we at? We're almost at an hour and a half. It's way too long. That's what she said. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Don't go on a hike. Eat some tacos and watch Netflix. And I will see you guys Monday.